My first race of the season is nearly here, a half marathon at the beginning of March. So in this video, I thought I'd show you my shoe rotation, which will hopefully see me through most of the year, as well as explain a few reasons as to why you should consider building a shoe rotation for yourself. So if you're not familiar with what a shoe rotation is, it's essentially wearing different pairs of shoes for different types of runs, such as off-road trail runs, tempo workouts, and even race day. It might sound overkill having so many pairs of shoes just to go out for a run, but there are actually several reasons as to why having a rotation to switch between is important. Probably the most important reason to rotate between shoes is to reduce the risk of overuse injuries and to allow yourself to actually keep running. Injury risk is generally lower when rotating shoes because different types of shoes have an effect on the way you run, also known as your running gait and which muscles you actually end up recruiting. Rotating your shoes helps to place less repetitive stress on your legs, leading to a lower injury risk. The second reason to rotate your shoes is down to the foam being used, considered as one of the most important parts of the running shoe, as it's responsible for providing cushioning that is supportive and to return energy into your stride. Being a high impact form of movement, running causes this foam to compress, which over time will weaken the foam itself and reduce the amount of support it provides. Even if you were to only rotate between two pairs of shoes, the recovery time in between uses allows the foam to compress, meaning they will last longer than if you were to only wear one pair of shoes every day. So when it comes to running shoes, there are tons of different variations in aspects of the shoe, like the type of the foam used, the stack height and stability. Some shoes are designed specifically to provide more support for those longer, slower runs, whilst others may not be as comfortable, but are light and meant to have you run as fast as possible. Rotating through these different types of shoes allows you to use what is most fit for purpose and ultimately get the most out of them. So moving on to the rotation itself, the first shoe is a daily trainer, which I got last June, and that is the Hoka Mac 4. As of recording, I've run 332 kilometers in them, so there's definitely a bit of life left in them. The main reason for getting these specifically was for needing a new daily trainer last year and them being on offer at Wiggle. But I'll be honest and say I haven't been massively pleased with them, but I think this is down to the sizing. In a normal shoe, I'm a size 12, but I do like to size up a bit when it comes to running shoes, just to allow a bit more space for when my feet swell up. The Hopers were only available in a 12, so I was taking a bit of a gamble with them, which didn't really pay off in my opinion. The shoes are okay if I'm just heading out for a steady 5K or maybe even a 10K, but I really wouldn't want to be running any further than these personally. They're okay comfort wise, but I felt a bit heavy and sluggish compared to other shoes I run in. I'll certainly keep using them whilst they are still in a decent condition for those shorter steady plods where you just need to put something on your feet. I know a lot of people have really enjoyed running in the Mac 4s and I may well have liked them more if I'd sized up a bit, but you live and learn with these things and you don't know until you try. The second shoe in the rotation is another one from last year, which I'm hoping to squeeze a little bit more life out of, and that is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2s. I've really enjoyed running in these shoes, even though in hindsight, they probably weren't the best choice for my running gait. In fact, I would go as far to say they are my favorite shoes that I've ever run in so far. They are definitely a faster shoe for me compared to Hoka's, so I tended to use them for speed work or longer runs mainly, but also when I just fancied wearing a pair of shoes that were fun to run in. To begin with, they felt very unstable underfoot, not really ideal when I overpronate a bit, but it was something I soon got used to. Since then, it has of course lost some of that oomph, but I'm still hoping they still have a little bit of life in them. I've ran just shy of 500 kilometers in them, which may not seem like a massive amount for some, but something to bear in mind is that I am a bigger guy at 90 plus kilos, so each step I take puts more wear on the shoes than it would for someone that's much lighter. Let me know your thoughts on this, but for someone my size, I think maybe 600 kilometers is the upper limit before they need to go to shoot heaven. Until then, I think I'll continue using the Speed 2s for the odd run, as I do already have a replacement for them, and maybe a few runs on a treadmill as they are just such a fun shoe to run in. The third shoe in the rotation I've had for the longest, yet put hardly any miles into, and that is the Hoka Speed Goat 4s, which I wear as a trail shoe. I've had these for getting on two years now, but I've only ran 44 kilometers in them. The main reason for getting them in the first place was for my first ever triathlon at Croyd in 2021, as the run is mainly off-road, and it just so happened to be biblical weather on the day, so they came in really handy for that. The only other run I can remember wearing them for was a recent park run, where I took on what is considered to be one of the UK's hardest down at Woolacombe Dunes. Given that it sees you run up a literal sand dune, the speed goats were a really good choice, especially as hardly any sand ended up getting into the shoes. I can't see that they'll get a huge amount of use again this year, but it's nice to know I have them should I fancy going off-road and finding some trails. 
after Ironman Wales in September, I'm thinking I want to focus a bit more on running and would love to have a go at some cross country later in the year. So they may well get some more use then, but we'll have to wait and see. The next shoe in the rotation is one of three pairs that I picked up very recently, and that's the Saucony Guide 15s. A bit like with the Hokers, the main reason for getting these were the price. I got them for a bargain at just £60, so for that price, it was worth taking a bit of a punt. I really enjoyed running in my Speed 2s, so thought the Guide 15 would make an ideal eventual replacement for the Mac 4s as my daily trainers, especially as it provides some stability for overpronators like myself. I've only been out for two runs in these so far, and I can say they are very comfortable. Sockney don't do half sizes as far as I'm aware, so I went for a 13 just to give myself a bit of extra room, and I'm glad I did. One disappointing thing I've found already is that they tend to let water in, even when it's not really raining. Only yesterday I went out and it was only drizzling a little bit before it stopped, and I'm pretty sure I didn't step in any puddles, but my feet ended up getting absolutely soaked. When I was doing a bit of research into them, there were several people complaining about this problem, so I did sort of expect it, but it wasn't enough of a reason not to get them as they were so heavily discounted. I'll keep on using them alongside the Mac 4s for the easier runs, but it may be I end up only using them in the dry or on the treadmill, just so I don't end up with a load of water sloshing around inside. Thankfully, I have my shoe dryer for them. Click on the video in the corner of the screen somewhere to see that review of that one uh, once you finish watching this video. Moving on to the next shoe in the rotation, we have the Adidas Adi Zero Takumi Sen 8 which I'm really looking forward to running in for the first time at the weekend. Like the Guide 15s, these were on offer from the same retailer, and my thinking is they will soon replace the Speed 2s as my tempo slash speed shoe, whilst also being suitable for certain races or a fast 5k blast at park run. Based on the research I've done, the Sen 8s are great as a race day shoe for shorter distances, or even those long ones that are quite twisty and turny, as the rods are meant to propel you out corners, so no doubt I'll end up giving them a go in a race if the course doesn't necessarily suit my dedicated race day shoes. One thing that does concern me a little bit is the width of the shoes. I went half a size up on these and I can still feel how tight they are on the sides just from trying them on at home. Hopefully this won't be a big deal when I come to running them and they loosen up a bit, but just to be sure I relace them in a style to make them suitable for wider feet, so hopefully that will help. I've never ran in Adidas shoes before and I must say I really like the unique colorway and the design of the Sen 8, so I'm excited to give them a spin for the first time in a half marathon pace workout. So the final shoe in my rotation is the big one and that's the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3s, my first ever pair of carbon plated shoes which I'll keep exclusively for race day. As I mentioned earlier, I love running in the Speed 2s, so it made sense to stick with Stockany and go for their carbon racer. Now the price of these was again a factor that influenced my decision to actually buy them. So very briefly, I'll explain what I bought them for and you'll see that it was basically a no brainer. So I just so happened to come across a video which I'll link to in the description down below that covered a few bargains that were found here in the UK during January. In that video, I saw a retailer I hadn't heard of before called Start Fitness, so I had a look at their site. There on the homepage, I saw they had the Guide 15s heavily discounted, which was a good start as I was looking for a new daily trainer that also offered stability, and the Guide 15s seemed to tick that box. Whilst there, I had a look at what else they had discounted, as my Speed 2s were also getting to the point of needing to be replaced, and came across both the Sen 8s and the Pro 3s. So for the Guide 15s, the Sen 8s, Pro 3s, three pairs of socks, and next day delivery, I spent just over 300 quid. Considering at the time the Pro 3s themselves were retailing for 210 on Saucony's site, I just couldn't resist not picking them up. With a discount code which I found, the Guide 15s were £59, the Sen 8s were £90, and the Pro 3s were £150, so an absolute bargain if I do say so myself. Now, I need a bit of advice on what I should do when it comes to wearing the Pro 3s for the first time. My first race of the year is the Biddeford Half Marathon on the 5th of March, for which I intend on wearing the Pro 3s. Do I take them for a test run beforehand to get a feel for them, or leave them for the 5th? I'm more inclined to wear them at least once beforehand, but please do let me know your opinion down below. So there you have the six pairs of shoes that are forming my rotation for 2023. Let me know in the comments which shoes you're currently running in, as I'm always interested to see what others are using and how they're finding them. If you click on the video on screen, you can see my review of the Renogi boot dryer, which can dry out your wet trainers in as little as 20 minutes, which as you can imagine, is quite useful when you have a shoe rotation going. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please drop it a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more content like this. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.